This is the RD350 clutch basket, uh, same as uh, in 350A, 350B, and uh, in India uh, on HT LT. It's the same uh, carryover design, uh, also could be seen in 400 and uh, 250. Basically, um, all the 350, 400 cc air cooled uh, RDs have a similar construction or same construction if not carry over so i got this clutch basket in a reasonable good condition it it hasn't got much or at all anywhere on the teeth or on the fingers of the basket so uh, what i'm going to show you here today is the issue uh, we have um, with these particularly with these clutch basket uh, i guess uh, these were in production till 1980 and uh, after that Yamaha moved on to a different design which I will discuss uh, a bit later. So for the purpose of demonstration I have uh, removed these rivets and uh, what I generally do is I use angle grinder with a flap disc. Uh, it's the least damaging of all and it's very quick, safe and uh, uh, produces less amount of debris. So I've removed this uh, back plate and I'll show you uh, what internals look like. So typically um, um, the condition of this basket or the rubbers is seen on um, low mileage RDs up till say uh, 20,000 uh, kilometers or around 20,000 kilometers. Uh, so what happens that uh, this is a damper arrangement which you see uh, inside and uh, uh, the problem is that these dampers um, after some time they start disintegrating um, they start to uh, break down in a small pieces uh, it increases the amount of free play relative to the gear uh, free play of the basket relative to the gear more than necessary so even the new basket have some amount of free play uh, rotational free play this is uh, deliberately put there to take care of uh, any torsional vibrations um, any uh, backlash requirement and also to smoothen out the gear engagement uh, impulses so a little bit how it functions that the torque from primary drive is transferred uh, via these dampers into the basket so uh, the this gear is in constant uh, motion trying to absorb the vibration so um, what happens that on this particular design the torque is transferred from this, shall we say, the ring gear <coughs> into these uh, O-ring design dampers and uh, they kind of, uh, they get distorted, uh, they, they get crushed until um, these little ones, they start doing their job. So uh, during the acceleration, deacceleration, uh, these kind of the torque sh shifts between one side to uh, to the other and uh, there is a deliberate play as you can see uh, there's a gap these rubbers are uh, smaller than these ones so what happens that once the this rubber is deformed then the torque is immediately transferred on uh, to at least uh, three of them and they kind of uh, they are the main um, bearers of the torque so uh, the the main function of this polo rubber or this uh, ring type rubber is to perform the initial engagement and uh, smoothen out any micro vibration any torque fluctuate fluctuation or anything which could uh, lead to unnecessary um, vibration, noise, um, or the harshness in the transmission. So um, that's the function 
Yamaha could have easily uh, taken out this play, uh, this this rotational freedom if they they would have wanted to. But um, looking into the uh, looking into any design, for example, uh, in cars you have dual mass flywheel, or uh, in car in in the clutch in single diaphragm uh, dry clutch in the car you also have the spring springs for the same uh, reason is to take care of the torsional vibration so this 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 basket is uh, pretty much constantly doing this so when you accelerate it transfers the force uh, onto these ones uh, on this side of rotation and when you are deaccelerating then it's kind of transfer so uh, this is this is the function of the of the basket one of the important uh, thing is without taking this apart how do we know whether uh, these dampers are in good shape so what we need to do is uh, we need to remove this o-ring which sits uh, between the gear and the basket uh, you need to remove it because uh, usually this is uh, uh, this is quite tight and it's kind of it holds the the gear from uh, any uh, f uh, freedom of movement so it kind of gives a wrong impression that uh, uh, these dampers are in in good condition so once you carefully uh, make sure don't pinch it it's quite difficult to remove it so i will use something minimum as a flathead screw screwdriver to remove it without damaging it Although these are uh, available, if you would like to, and uh, can replace them if it uh, if if it gets damaged. So once you have removed that, then you can uh, between both of your hands you can hold this uh, and start, you know, turning it and make some assessment. Uh, how does it feel uh, in terms of freedom of movement? So um, luckily, I have a. A set of uh, new dampers which I took out of uh, uh, a brand new basket which I which I uh, had for many years so um, I will I will replace these dampers with the new one these this one is damaged a bit I'll, I'll show you that uh, even uh, such a low mileage basket could have uh, this kind of uh, deterioration inside so they're pretty much um like uh, in any combination whether it's a it's a new htlt bike or it's a old bike you will you will you will see some 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 form of damage they are i won't say is the one of the best design in the world so let's uh swap these broken ones with with the new and let's see how much is the freedom of movement So I have uh, now fitted this basket with uh, a, a non, you know, undamaged um, O-ring dampers, and as you can see, it's in very good condition. And uh, let us assess how much is the freedom of movement. So imagine your basket is in very good condition. So the total freedom of movement is somewhere around one to two degrees, not more than two degrees at max because you can compress them as you can uh, I will zoom in and you can see that there is a bit of compression and that is not more than more than two degrees you will be lucky if you if you put in a lot of effort then maximum you can see that it, it turns not more than two degrees so uh, when all the dampers are in good condition uh, let us assess uh, how much is the uh, degree of freedom so i've just it's very basic um, you try to turn it and you can see that uh, maybe one or two degrees you should be able to manage uh, without massive amount of effort obviously um, uh, if you use some kind of contraption then you'll be able to uh, uh, manage the compression of the polar dampers uh, so what happens generally that um, these 
polo rubbers they give up first because uh, the nature of design it's it's not as i say it's not one of the best designs so uh, these ones break first so what i'll do is i'll remove them to simulate uh, how the basket behaves when these ones are completely disintegrated so imagine that uh, these polo dampers are uh, completely disintegrated, which happens first. In order of damage, these are the first. Uh, these are the ones which uh, give up first. So once those two dampers are damaged, your freedom of movement goes to about four degrees. This is four degrees. I have measured it, and I will show you how to measure it. It's uh, using your mobile phone. You can easily do that. So I've removed the uh, polo dampers to simulate uh, how much is uh, how much is the uh, freedom of movement? So this is around four degrees. Four degrees of freedom of movement. Once you remove these this O-ring, and if you are able to turn your basket roughly to four degrees, then it is for sure uh, something has given up inside. Either uh, one side of the uh, O-ring or one side of the polo uh, damper is, is destroyed or the, the other or both. So this would be the amount of uh, freedom which you will experience. These ones are a little bit more robust. These solid rubbers are a bit more robust. They, they give up. Um, 20 to 40,000 kilometers age of bike and depends on how much heat uh, these dampers have seen depending on that they might disintegrate uh, I have seen baskets I have opened quite a few baskets and I've seen all of them damaged uh, some of them um, one or two of these are left but in majority cases these ones are completely gone uh, it's it's for sure that if you see anything more than two degrees, then uh, chances are that there would be more than one damper which is which is damaged. So worst comes circumstances, if I remove all the dampers um, to simulate uh, if all of them are broken, then the total freedom of degree could be up to 30 degrees so anything between 4 and 30 degrees freedom of movement means that all the dampers are gone this is the worst case when all the dampers are turned to dust obviously uh, that that dust packing will stop it uh, from going all the way from one extreme to the other however you will see in excess of 15 20 degrees so this is this is how much uh, uh, mostly uh, uh, freedom you will see when when uh, all all the dampers are damaged here yeah, i'm trying to simulate when um, all the dampers are disintegrated which is the worst case and uh, this can go up to 30 degrees obviously there would be the debris left inside won't allow it to go all the way to 30 degrees but you get the feel for it uh, how much this can uh, this can turn other failure mode which uh, i would like to discuss that uh, even if there are two dampers which are in good condition uh, even then the freedom of movement more, won't be more than four degrees and uh, and obviously uh, the uh, the associated issue is uh, that once these dampers disintegrate they kind of unevenly fill the basket and that could also lead to imbalance of the basket um, especially <clears throat> at the um, high speed uh, rotation um this could although uh, they they weigh like two to three grams but uh, yeah you could imagine that any uneven weight distribution to could potentially lead to to vibration um then there is a other thing which i would like to highlight here that this backing plate is uh 
riveted at four places and uh, between the rivets between these rivets there are these little 8 mm uh, rubber cushions or dampers shall we say and these dampers they kind of stops this plate from uh, making any contact to the main gear and also stops it uh, from making noise rattle noise so it kind of uh, it acts as a sandwich damper uh, between the the gear and the back plate so say for instance if I remove these dampers and uh, put this plate so what I have done is uh, remove these uh, little uh, dampers the float dampers and I put the back plate in position so the basket doesn't have any any dampers so I'd like to show you uh, uh, what happens is there's a bit of a float uh, in this uh, in this gear and this is to take care of any um, misalignment between this gear and the pinion gear uh, some axial misalignment or or um, you know um, there would be always some misalignment it, it cannot be uh, it cannot run perfectly so uh, it, it has to have some give and uh, that and this is this is what uh, it acts as a coupler this helps to take care of that misalignment however if these are uh, tiny dampers if they have seen the compression set and if they are become short in size then uh, the result would be that they, uh, they uh, there won't be any compression uh, to stop this uh, from uh, you know touching the back plate or the basket itself so what happens that uh, this this could start making rattle noise so this this float has to be has to be in a controlled um, uh, way it, it it cannot it cannot be absolutely free without any compression otherwise this whole assembly will make noise um, the other associated issue would be that uh, once uh, the rivets are are are, are uh, let's say they are slightly loose because of the uh, of the wear uh, between the gear and uh, the basket if the wear is too much then the, the basket starts uh, doing funny things um, you know the, the feel of clutch is not very positive uh, it, it kind of uh, it, no matter how much fine tuning you do for the bite this tiny amount of excess uh, movement beyond what Yamaha tried to put it in on first place leads to a very unusual feel of the clutch movement so once you repair the basket first thing you will see is uh, the clutch feel has improved a lot the bite is more precise and uh, the motion of the clutch feels like uh, it has got more confidence it feels firm so um, yeah although not much i would say if you stick a feeler gauge it's uh, it's like 0.1 of a mil or maybe 0.2 but it has definitely it has a it has a significant contribution uh, towards the, the towards the motion of the clutch so let us look at uh, how this 8 mm damper uh, you know um, uh, gets compressed so you can see uh, one of the uh, the side is flattened out it's a bit shiny and the other side uh, it has a kind of a dome shape so when this uh, rubber is new uh, it is dome shape uh, both sides but over the period of time due to the heat cycling and mechanical loading uh, a bit of compression set is uh, is there it takes place and uh, this this rubber stops doing its uh, its job of keeping the uh, the gear you know um, floating within the required range and stop it from making noise this is when um, all four dampers say for example are not working they are not doing its job 
they are completely um, uh, re they are fully reduced in size so this is uh, this this is what happens now just to uh, just to show what I have done here is I have uh, turned these amperes around so uh, the dome shape is now facing up and I'll put the plate back plate in position and uh, now you can see that uh, there is hardly any movement obviously the noise which you hear is because I can only compress so much so there there is hardly any movement so um, obviously when the basket experiences the force in the engine is much higher than what we can simulate by hand but the point is that these tiny rubbers have big contribution towards the uh, towards the noise attenuation to summarize um, these dampers in order for this basket to function properly within the given boundary conditions like uh, the amount of uh, necessary f free play uh, both in rotational and axially these rubber should be um, should be in good condition at least they shouldn't be broken uh, they can become little hard uh, over the over the years because of aging because of the heat um, the the heating uh, or the aging accelerates faster if the clutch basket uh, uh, is not uh, it doesn't get enough time to cool down due to the excessive use of clutch or slippage of clutch uh, it gets really hot uh, more than the oil temperature and that is that is when uh, these uh, the aging um, aging becomes uh, it, it accelerates you know so uh, compared to a basket which had an easy life and uh, hasn't seen much of the clutch drag I would uh, expect these rubbers to be a bit more supple and uh, slightly in better condition uh, in terms of uh, measuring the hardness if you use a, a shore uh, meter they will uh, it'll show you that uh, they are between 70 to 80 uh, these ones are a bit uh, bit old and they have aged so it's around uh, it's around 85 uh, however if I uh, measure a new rubber uh, damper it's around 75 so obviously with the time and heat cycles it has aged a bit um, you can you can feel that uh, a, a new rubber damper is uh, you can you can compress it between your fingers a bit however when they uh, they have it, when they have seen some thermal cycling and uh, a continuous usage uh, they become a bit hard so uh, yeah and then that could also contribute towards uh, the uh, the transfer of unwanted vibration so once you have uh, repaired this clutch basket and uh, put the right rivets back into them obviously not for, uh, forgetting the, the rubber o-ring the bike will feel or it will sound significantly quieter than a noisy clutch basket for obvious reasons the clutch will the clutch motion will feel uh, quite uh, positive firm the bite of the clutch will be uh, significantly better than before the adjustments you can make fine adjustments to the clutch uh, you know um, the Yamaha manual says that you fully tighten it and then uh, loosen it quarter turn and that is for the condition when basket doesn't have excessive free play once you have repaired the basket then uh, you should be able to achieve a near perfect uh, clutch function assembly would be more balanced because uh, you've got all the dampers in good condition so that should also uh, contribute towards lowering the overall vibration experience at the end i would say that uh, these dampers um, should be ideally to the correct dimensions correct hardness and correct material if they aren't then there's no point in taking the clutch basket apart and uh, doing the, the the repair because 
um, more damage would be done than than good I would say um, because uh, the way how it has been engineered it has to be put back in a similar way at least close to it so that it's able to um, function and able to uh, deliver what it is supposed to so um, these are uh, these dampers are oil resistant uh, high temperature made out of high temperature uh, rubber with good shear strength the, the specifications are able to meet the the, the requirement of the function so um, just putting something random will not uh, you know help the the whole the, the whole function of this uh, this basket and uh, hopefully in the next video I should be able to discuss uh, uh, a bit more about these dampers and uh, how to replace them and uh, what to do if they are completely disintegrated so thank you very much for watching this video and uh, speak to you guys soon bye